Hello SGD, this video will be about fire setting. I'll be using video, I've done presentations on it just using cards and narration, but just to show, it's mainly about how to work granite using fire setting. Bottom left you can see just one of the many examples available on YouTube where people want to break a big granite boulder. Just a little bit of wood, they don't use charcoal or anything, you know, just, just plain old campfire mm -hmm. and it really does break up and destroy granite very quickly. The clips come from a documentary called The Ten Greatest Discoveries of Ancient Egypt. I believe it. links will be in the description. But one of the sections has Adil Kalani, who's probably the main guy in regards to places like Aswan Quarry and quarrying research in ancient Egypt. Also, Per Stormeyer, I'll put his uh, link to his video and some search terms in there as well. So, using fire setting, even copper would be an excellent tool, but fire setting very important feature we'll have a look at that now adil kalani has spent a career investigating ancient quarrying techniques this is a good example for natural cracks in granite layers which is really very important to looking for before to start working granite has naturally occurring fault lines where the rock is already weak by identifying and targeting these fault lines, the ancient engineers could begin the process of splitting the stone from the bedrock. It would be the ease of chiseling rock because there, there would, you'd have to cut the face, you'd have to kind of break pieces out of it, but there'd always be this plane of weakness that would help separate the rock in an expeditious manner. Adil Kalani mentioned the f natural fractures that are in stone. Now, whenever you have a little, well, you, you, Wherever you can see exposed stone, look around and very soon you'll find that there's already a natural crack in there. So if you want to extract a big obelisk, you have to be sure that you're not cutting across a big crack. So this is as one quarry and now for instance you can see natural fractures all over the place. So this is what you need to look out for. And you want to avoid them while well, you're cutting across them, but you also they're a great way and you take advantage of these as much as to avoid them, this also come into the test pits that are brought up very often. Uh, we'll come back to later, a bit more, later in the video, but anyway, there's the unfinished obelisk, and these blue lines indicate a natural dolerite seam. So those pounding stones, that's where they can be found. They didn't need to be imported from far away, but they're actually exported from here to other quarries because it's a very good tool. But in terms of cracks, so we're not far from the unfinished obelisk and one of the test pits there, you can see the natural crack and you can just take advantage of that because now you can break it away. And where you, where you find these test pits is they're on the natural crack. What they were doing was digging down to find the crack and to make sure it didn't turn suddenly or they knew where it was and so they knew where to cut. That's a bag, it just looks like a beetle anyway. But So you see the test pit, see the big natural crack through there? That's what these test pits are for natural crack natural crack you see it through there and so you want to again you want to avoid them running across the middle of the stone you're cutting but if you want to place your stone along the natural crack because again this is going to make it so much easier to do so that's what these mysterious test pits are for because that's exactly where they're planted you can even see um, why, where they are there uh, test pits as well around the unfinished obelisk on some of the test pits there is still writing on the wall to indicate the dates and the progress of what they were made. So again, this is an, um, again, there's so many papers in regard to this, it's just not covered in the lost ancient high tech uh, people because it just ruins their narrative. Um, and, yeah, and another thing that uh, he points out, so those worn dolerite pounders, well that's like using a ball hammer, but it, this is for instance a pile that was in another quarry exported these sharp angular ones, so it's just like the difference between using a ball hammer and a, um, a more specialised hammer f for steel, a steel hammer for working with stone. The sharp ones are more uh, angular and they're more like a pick, you'd put more force into them. And uh, yeah, so test pits, natural cracks, they're all sort of there and again you can just sort of see them there, so that's what you want to avoid and what you want to exploit as well. In the second phase, laborers bashed handheld stone pounders into the fracture line to wear the rock down. These early sledgehammers were made of dolerite, a stone much harder than granite. But the technique took time. 
and time was a luxury that the quarrymen did not have. Trust his legacy to his successor. You had all... Beneath the quarry, the archaeologists found the clues which tell us what the solution was. What we have here, actually, it's all the story. It's like open book. It tells us everything about what, what the Egyptian meant. Within the strata are charred mud bricks, burnt wood chips, and heat fractured shards of stone. From this, Adel believes he's worked out how Egypt's engineers accelerated the quarrying process. The Egyptian used fire to help them for splitting the stone. Heat from a fire would cause the rock to expand, and cooling would cause the rock to contract. This process weakens and can even split the rock. In theory, if the Egyptians could control this, they could split large sections of the granite. But Adel has not tested the theory till now. I'm exciting to see the result because it's a new discovery. Here it's also worth noting that granite, well known to be very susceptible to fire. So on fire engineering, granite is a building material. Of all building stones and aside from wood, of all building materials, granite is the most susceptible of injury by fire. It's very strong in a lot of ways, but granite, if you try and bend a slab of granite, it will fracture and break just like glass. Just like glass, granite is almost uh, the majority, the largest component of it is quartz or silica. So there are, there's a big crossover between the way that granite behaves, both by trying to bend it, but also how it reacts to heat and cold cycles. You might have seen a video where people put boiling water onto a frozen windscreen to, and what happens? Well, here's the same thing. So we've heated up the glass, put boiling water in there. Now it's just in reverse, heat, cold cycles. Pour the hot, it's heated up, it's expanded, made of silica or quartz, just like granite. And now we're going to put some cold water in there and it's going to suddenly want to shrink down. You see the ice and give it a moment and just like granite, Pop, it breaks. Exactly as the ancient engineers did, Adel selects a fault line in the rock. Mud bricks found at the unfinished obelisk site suggest that the ancient engineers built a wall to contain and control the fire. The fire raises the temperature of the rock to 800 degrees. This expands and stresses the rock. After 60 minutes of intense heat, it is safe for Adel to approach. Per, Stor or per Stormeyer, I'll put links in the description, he's another person who's done quite a bit of uh, studying of ancient quarries in Egypt and elsewhere. Here he is in Norway at a chert quarry. He just fire set used fire now he's using bone and stone tools to remove this chert or flint which was a um, essential tool excellent tool also for carving details into granite as well um adele adul kalani he he burnt for one hour which is much more than necessary small short-lived fires is what you've only got to heat up the stone and you put the water on it to rapidly cool it down it's not like baking a cake you just got to get it hot and then get the sudden change and that will break up the stone. So I've done some examples as well and there's some interesting differences between uh, granite and the dolerite. This is a small piece of granite which I had fire set. So I, I heated up in a campfire, low temperature, and it was only in there 10 minutes and even that was probably more than was necessary. Now I'm holding the camera in one hand and I've got a stone, uh, a flint hammer in the other. Uh, if I was to do this with a proper steel hammer, I would really be smashing it and you know really putting energy in there. I'm just basically tapping the stone at this point. And so this, not only does the stone break up, but it turns into sand. Uh, very, once it starts cracking to bits, it's going to turn into stand, sand very quickly. So I've also tried, I thought it was granite when I was doing it, and it turned out to be a, a boulder of 
um, dolerite, this behaves very differently. But just as an example, once you fire set stone, even for a short amount of time, it turns to little you know, gravel and then into sand, and I was able to make an abrasive to do an experiment in there. So just another example. Um, at Kalani, burnt for one hour, way more than what is necessary. Low campfire for a short time, then splash the water on top, and you will actually absolutely ruin, permanently ruin the granite, and then you're able to break it up into pieces and, and, and even into dust very, very easily. Water causes the temperature to drop by 85% in seconds. The rock rapidly contracts. Ooh. No, it's very hot, very, very hot. But what damage has the heat done? Adel can now experiment whether the fire-weakened stone is easier to split than a second untreated fracture. After half an hour, he calls stop. Without fire, the workmen on the control test have made little impact on the fracture line. But at the burnt fracture, the crack is crumbling. You can see how the fire sitting affected with the granite layers. It's working very, very fast more than what we have expected before. That explains how the ancient Egyptian made a lot of obelisks in very, very short times. It's therefore likely that the way to quarry such large amounts of rock in such a short amount of time would be with the aid of fire. One of the main mystery of the ancient Egyptian techniques solved by this operation today. The unfinished obelisk. So with these two photos, now, even just with the pounders and without fire setting, multiple experiments have shown there would be maximum 18 months to have done the unfinished obelisk, which is not unreasonable for a grand project, and you, you're a king and you're rich, you throw people and time at it, and there's only so many people can fit in, so it's not a, you know, you're losing a huge amount of your population, but with fire setting, it would be done very, very, very quickly, as we see by this experiment. Uh, this is a, well, we see the unfinished obelisk, but what's also important to note uh, are all these, do the dolerite tools which are around there. Now, most people think of the round spheres, but Adele Kalani also pointed out that sharp, angular dolerite, which is basically a, a pick, uh, is a much better tool than the round, that the round ones were worn out tools, the sharp ones were new ones. In quarries on the other side of the river, they found that this same dolerite was there, the dolerite actually comes less than like 50 metres away from where the obelisk is. There's a seam which is available there. It makes a great tool. Uh, then there's, so the unfinished obelisk just has a trench. Now there's another um, obelisk there which has this undercut trench. But this narrow trench, can you use fire setting? Well, they show an example there. So I just want to point, so uh, stone has a low thermal conductivity have a piece of copper heated on one end and it heats up really quickly on the other. Stone is not like that. So they built the mud brick walls, they had the fire burning. Now, because especially it's bedrock, it's, in a, uh, it's a, the heat will be not conducted through this large piece of bedrock, so it's gonna be more localized. So only the area directly connected with the fire is gonna approach those temperatures where it's gonna, um, have that thermal shock and expansion thing happening so you dig down a little bit you repeat the process and then you can go down so i've seen in comments people uh, certain groups like really don't like this idea of fire setting and really look for um become really skeptical all of a sudden but it's a how to, to create those narrow trenches it's just not a problem uh to do to do that at all. So I just wanted to point that out. With, with that mud brick wall, you localise the heat. Uh, on the other side of the wall, it's not going to be suffering those same temperatures and and then well, fire setting, it actually works. Something also I think is very important, especially related to Aswan Quarry and those dolerite pounders. Uh, a while back, um, I, I thought this was 
these boulders were granite, but actually now I found out that they're dolerite from the nearby prospect quarry. So just like the Perb Stormire experiment, I burnt them for a very short time in a low temperature fire. I didn't have bellows or furnace or um, anything like that to you know, accelerate the process. Low temperature, open flame, and b but what my per I thought it was granite, and just like that smaller piece of granite, I wanted to break it up and then smash it into a, a dust, a powder, or a sand to use that as abrasive with the earlier experiments I'd done with cutting, drilling, and polishing stone. However, now that I know it's dolerite, well, what happened makes a lot more sense because, as we'll show in a moment, it behaves very similar in a way that the fire caused cracks and did cause it to break up. But even when those pieces were broken up, I kept smashing and smashing. I couldn't reduce them to to a dust, to a powder, because now this would apply to the Aswan quarry where they have that big um, seam of dolerite running right next to the unfinished obelisk and how that same stone can be found in other quarries and the angular nature of those stones. So the round one's nice for your hands, but just like you wouldn't use a, a, a round hammer to you know work at even if it's steel to work at um, stone, you'd almost certainly use a pick for almost uh, every type of job. But, but look what happened here was, so I've, put, I've heated it up, I've poured water on it. You can see it's already starting just the, the sudden temperature change. You'll see some cracks already forming there where it's broken up. Uh, then I take a stone and I break it up into smaller pieces and I have those angular tools ready to be made. So fire setting, I believe, would be very important and applicable to the Aswan quarry, how they extracted all of those dolerite tools. Because you, if it was granite, it would take you, if you fire set granite and then try to use that, it's, it's like using glass. It would just shatter, it would break up. But even when it's been fire set, and then I did it a few times afterwards, hoping to break it up into, into a dust, a powder, uh, well, it just it's resistant to it. It does crack into these large sharp pieces, but it wouldn't reduce into the uh, It's also note this the, this orange coloring You know from some sort of you know, whatever the chemistry is going on in there as well. It was a weird coloring as well, which um, stuck out um, As something interesting so fire setting does absolutely work that dolerite behaves a little bit different to granite under fire setting would be very beneficial in making those tools and taking a big bit of dolerite and then reducing it to smaller bits and even after it was fire set it still I, I used it to hammer against unfire set granite and this stuff is tough as guts even compared to granite even with the sharp edges uh, it's an uh, it's it's an amazing tool and because it's it's freely available it doesn't need to be smelted and all of that so there's a lot of evidence for fire setting it works great it works really fast and also the dolerite there at the Aswan quarry I think is another important feature where fire setting would uh, definitely be a benefit and probably worth looking into those dolerite seams that are right next to the unfinished obelisk uh, anyway SGD See, like I'm trying to see, I'm, I'm trying to, these are not reducing down. They did crack along those thermal shock lines, but it, you just couldn't break it. Even after fire setting, you couldn't reduce it to, to a dust, to a powder, as where granite just crumbles under any sort of pressure after it's been through a short cycle of fire setting. With that, I think this information, it's... I know some people don't like it, and I noticed the colour there as well. But you know, you know, the, the mystery of the unfinished obelisk and granite working and, and ancient peoples. Well, fire setting, lots of evidence for it in lots of quarries. A lot of people have studied it. There's papers published on it. A lot of other little details. But um, yeah, I think this is like another one of these. Um, the people who talk about the mystery of this. Uh, why can't they do these experiments? Why haven't they looked into it? Why don't they ever reference the people who have done this? They just say, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, can't be done. It would take 5,000 years to do it and it's just impossible. No, it's not. It's, uh, you know, mystery flourishes in a vacuum of, of uh, lack of information and the mystery is very profitable. And these very cheap, easy to do experiments, which the lost ancient high con uh, community n enough, done nothing.
zero over and especially in the last 10 years where this has been really popular so to those if you're interested here's some information it costs nothing really to do these experiments and to those who want to resist it you can resist reality all you want but you know it's going to bite you back eventually sgd have a good one